everyone and welcome to my page a dose of devotion it is testimony tuesday uh, so i'm a little late to the page because i was having technical difficulties so i'm not sure if you're seeing me it says that i'm live so i'm just going to continue uh, moving forward if you are uh, watching and if you do hear me if you don't mind just leave me a comment just letting me know so that i can go ahead once i'm done publish and post this video but it says that i'm live so i'm, I'm going to pursue it as if um, i am so Welcome, welcome. I am just so excited for what the Lord has on my heart to uh, share tonight. Um, this one's been brewing in me all day. It's almost like... Um all right, devil, watch what I do now. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, you know how it is when, you know, something is just, uh, you know, you're going through it and you're going through it. And like my pastor says, you know, we go through the test so that we can have a testimony. Amen. And so that's what this is all about. This is about Testimony Tuesday of what God's been uh, showing me and revealing to me about him and his word. Amen. And so, yeah, the, the um, topic of tonight I'm going to talk about is take it to the war room. Amen. Amen. Take it to the roar room. So I'm going to start off with prayer and then I'm going to get right into it. Okay. So uh, just, we're just going to go ahead and get into prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for what you're doing. I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you for this moment to reveal your word. I thank you for truth. Lord, I am asking Lord that uh, you would remove me and step in and just reveal your heart, that you would speak divine utterances through me, Lord, and use me to reveal your love, your glory, and your truth. Holy Spirit, I say, come, have your way. I bind distractions in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you that you would draw all men unto you who need to hear this, who would be blessed by this. I know I have, and I'm just so excited to share, Lord. Thank you, Father, for revealing your heart and revealing your word. Let blinders be removed. Let us, our hearts be receptive to receive truth in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, so my thing says that I'm live, so that's good news. All right, well, hello, everyone. Welcome again. Um, so take it to the war room. You know, um, a lot of times uh, we hear, um, I don't want to get ahead of myself here. <laughs> My beginning is a little shaky, so so bear with me here. Okay, so I'm going to start off with this. I, I When I was... Um, on here a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I'm not sure if you remember, if you've seen that video, but I was talking about David and Goliath and how Goliath the giant, we all know the kids the word giant, the giant uh, named Goliath was coming in and raiding the land and he was threatening uh, King Saul's army at David's land and um, just, you know, blaspheming God and just mocking and making fun and just tormenting and torturing uh, these individuals, everybody in the army and everybody in this land. Um, and the Philistines were there to back him up and they were just ready for war. They were on um, the verge of war. And this Goliath was coming up and he was just making fun. He was lying. He was just torturing them, right, with all his, his comments. And nobody was doing anything. Everybody was just kind of standing around and listening. And, and uh, all of a sudden David come up, you know, and he heard him. And, and righteous indignation rose up. And he was like, how dare this, this Philistine, right, or this, this yeah, this uncircumcised Philistine. Philistine insult the Lord our God and uh, he went to fight amen well when he went to fight King Saul said well here's my armor put on my armor um, and he tried it and we, we read in the Bible that that video he he said he tested the armor but he, he did not have a chance no he put on the armor he did not have an opportunity to test it therefore he did not want to use it and we all know that it was just too big it didn't fit him uh, it was oversized and he couldn't function so he removed it right who can you know who can go to battle with something that's too big for you right or, or it's too small maybe, or it's uncomfortable and you're unable to maneuver and fight, right, and wage war. So he took it off and he stuck with what he knew. He stuck with what worked. And I referred that then to revelation, you know. Uh, we, can't, we, always, we can't always function in somebody else's revelation. Sometimes it takes a fresh word from God. It takes a rhema word to, that really just blows on the embers of our spirit and, and ignites us into all that God has for us. And uh, the Lord did that with me with um, what I'm going to share with you tonight. And and we hear things over and over again, but when God gives you a fresh word and when he, uh, you know, gives you fresh revelation hot off the press, it can really minister to you in the season that you're in and what it is that you're going through. Amen. And so just like uh, David was trying on King Saul's armor and it didn't fit, you know, uh, God has given him uh, his own tools and has equipped him with his own, you know, um, 
revelation. He, he showed him that, you know, he was the God who saves and he, he saved him with his hidden battles, you know, when he was up against the bear and the lion, you know, it was in secret, it was behind the scenes. But because of those victories, he was able to, to have faith in God, to believe for the greater. And he said, because he, uh, God delivered me from, you know, the bear and the lion, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? He surely he'll deliver us from this. And so, uh, we saw, we know that David, you know, he approached Goliath and he took him out. Amen. Well, um, a lot of times God is saying, I have equipped you. I have given you an armor and, um, you need to use that armor that I've equipped you. You can't just assume that, you know, based off of somebody else's revelation that it's going to work for you in the situation and the season that you're in. I want you to seek me and find out what I have to say about you in the season that you're in. But I want to take a little twist to this, you know. A lot of times we go through battles and a lot of times we think that we're, we're going to war. Um, but what does that really mean? You know, are, are, we, are we going through war? Are we uh, facing these battles or going through these battles and... And my pastor says, you know, if you're going through some, keep on going. Well, are, are we just are we just going through the, the motions? Are we just, you know, sitting still and just letting the fight come to us, you know? Or are we rising up and roaring against these demonic forces that are coming at us? You know, there's a difference between battles and putting up with battles. Um, sometimes, you know, or actually battle to battle, it takes two people, right? It takes two forces coming against each other, uh, waging war. So if you are going through something, you should be fighting back. We should be fighting back. We shouldn't be just sitting here and taking it 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 and taking it. So tonight I want to really just stir you that there's a moment, there's a time, and there's a place where we need to fight back. And when we fight Excuse me, when we fight back, we're not just fight, fighting back in our own strength. Come on, we're fighting it back in God's strength because He is, uh, He has equipped us. And so I'm going to read to you um, out of a passage in, um, make sure I get ahead of myself here. <laughs> Yeah, so it's, it's like I was saying, it's not enough to simply ignore and brush aside uh, what the enemy is attacking us with. You know, a lot of times the battles in the mind and a thought or a situation may rise up and, and compromise us. And, and uh, you know, we don't have to take that. We don't have to just let that happen. We don't have to just ignore, we don't want to ignore it and just assume that it's all going to work out or, or this is just the way life is or, or you know what, I don't know what to do, so I'm just going to ignore it and, and just block it and, and hide behind a wall and just cover it, right? No, we want to face these things. We want to we want to take action. And how do we do that? What does that mean? We, you know, we don't want to just resist. The Bible says, submit to God, resist the devil, and he'll flee. Yes, but then there are opportunities where it causes for a fight. And um, and that takes uh, action in prayer. You know, we, we want to fight these things in the, in the spirit realm. Amen. So what I'm trying to get at here, I'm hoping this makes sense because this is new to me and I'm learning, so uh, bear with me, but it's so good. So the Lord revealed to me, Ephesians 6, uh, I'm going to read in the Passion Translation again because this is so good. I see you guys. Hi, Anicia. Hi, Marie. Okay, yay. I'm glad you can see me. I was having technical difficulties earlier, so. All right, I'm going to talk about Ephesians 6 tonight. I'm going to talk about Ephesians 6, uh, 10 through 19 in the Passion Translation. It's so good, man. So now, my beloved ones, I have saved these most important truths for last. Be supernaturally infused with strength through your life union with the Lord Jesus. Stand victorious with the force of his explosive power flowing in and through you. Put on God's complete set of armor provided for us so that you will be protected as you fight against the evil strategies of the accuser. Your hand-to-hand -hand comment is not with human beings, but with the highest principalities and authorities operating in rebellion under the heavenly realms. For they are a powerful class of demon gods and evil spirits that holds this dark world in bondage. Because of this, you must wear the armor of God that provides that the armor that God provides so you're protected as you confront the slanderer for you are destined for all things and will rise victorious so we can see here I'm going to put a bookmark here we can see here that you know we're not wrestling with flesh and blood and I learned something when I uh, was going to young adults on Wednesday night where somebody was uh, we were all sharing you know different revelations that we were receiving and somebody shared you know when this says you we're not wrestling against flesh and blood I personally always thought that we were talking about you know 
our, our neighbors, our family, our friends, people that we come across in, in everyday life. You know, we don't wrestle against them personally. You know, we wrestle against the powers working behind them and influencing them. And, and so um, that's how I always portrayed this scripture. But they were sharing, a friend of mine was sharing that uh, she was talking about herself. Uh, she thought it meant her flesh and her blood. You know, she's not wrestling with her flesh. She's wrestling against the demonic forces that are trying to influence her flesh. And I thought that was just so powerful. I was like, man, that is so good. You know, so sometimes, you know, a lot of the battles isn't even with somebody that you know or somebody that you come across. A lot of times the battle is, is with our own flesh and there's demonic forces that are trying to influence and penetrate us, uh, our thought life or our, 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 um, our, yeah, our flesh in order to, you know, try to convince us to, to, you know, disobey God or, or to sin or falter or fall behind or, or even just to suffer and, and uh, get into, you know, uh, sickness and disease or, or whatever the situation is. There's something that's trying to rob you of God's best for your life. There's something that's trying to steal, kill, and destroy his plan A for your life. And so when we recognize that, then we get in the spirit. And God said, I didn't, I didn't, you know, call you to wrestle with flesh and blood, but we are, we are at war with the highest principalities and authorities operating in rebellion under the heavenly realms. And it says here that, you know, they are a powerful class of demon gods and evil spirits that hold this dark world in bondage. So we can see that there is a God of this world. Satan is the God of this world, right? And so he is always, you know, going to manipulate or, or influence the circumstance in his favor. But we've got the power of God, amen. We've got the spirit of God residing inside of us to overcome and take authority over these things. But if we don't know that, you know, we're not going to battle then. If we don't know that, we, there, there's no war that we're in. We're just accepting. We're just allowing. We're just uh, putting up with the schemes of, of hell. So this is because you must... Because of this, you must wear the armor that God provides you to protect you as you confront the slanderer. So when he's doing all these schemes, we, we need to confront him. We need to approach him. We don't need to just, you know, wait for him to come to us or wait till it's too late or, or wait until, you know, the circumstance causes for it. No, we need to be vigilant. We need to be aware. We need to be watchful. We need to be in the spirit realm 24-7. We need to stay full of God in order to recognize the plans of the enemy so we can take authority and and find these things in the, in the spirit realm, right? So this happens in prayer. We're not walking around, um, you know, like crazy people, you know, in the grocery store and just, you know, making a scene out loud and, and you know, causing a ruckus. I mean, if God's called you to it, praise the Lord, he'll use you for it. But uh, most of these battles, like David, are behind the scenes. And a lot of times when we have our, we have our own battles behind the scenes so that we can face battles uh, in public for somebody else, you know, so a lot of like David, like a lot of times he was in battle facing bears and the lions on his own territory with his own situation in his own environment. But then when it called for others to that needed to be delivered or set free or healed um, or provided for, you know, because of the faith that he you know, grew in the, in the, in the secret place in his own personal life, he was then able to minister and stand up and, and, um, protect his friend, his fellow believers in public. Amen. So God will promote you in public, what you put up with or what you face in and don't put up with in private. Amen. So it's like, it's like your secret place, your prayer life is your practice ground. And, and whatever you overcome, whatever you go through, whatever you battle the most in your secret place, when you get the victory, God's going to promote you in public for you to be used um, as a vessel of God for his glory to help somebody else. Amen? So uh, we don't want to just allow the enemy to have a field day in our lives. We don't want to just allow the enemy to come in and just rob and steal and kill uh, you know, God's best for our lives. We need to be vigilant. We need to stay on top of it. And we need to bind the enemy with these tactics. So how do we do that? What is it that God has equipped us with? He's equipped us with put on the truth as a belt to strengthen you to stand in triumph. Put on holiness as a protective armor that covers your heart. Stand on your feet, alert, then you'll always be ready to share the blessings of peace. In every battle, take faith as your wrap-around shield, for it is able to extinguish the blazing arrows coming at you from the evil one. Embrace the power of salvation's full deliverance like a helmet to protect your thoughts from lies, and take the mighty, razor-sharp spirit sword of the spoken word of God. So we can see that he's given us an armor. 
He's given us an armor. He's given us the belt of truth, right? He's given us uh, the breastplate of righteousness or holiness. He's given us um, the, uh, the boots, so to speak, of uh, the feet of peace to walk on, to stand on. Amen. And he's given us a shield of faith to protect us from the lies of the enemy. And he's given us the helmet of salvation. Um, and then, of course, he's given us the um, two-edged sword, the, the Bible, which is the word of God that we use to, to attack or, or to, um, to declare over the situation, right? Over our situation, amen? Uh, and so when the enemy, let's see. So when um, the Bible says, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee, that's talking about temptation, okay? That's talking about, you know, distractions of the enemy. That's talking about, you know, when the Lord is trying, when, when the devil is trying to uh, steer you away from the will and the righteousness of God and, and, and uh, trying to prevent you from being obedient, right? That's, that's what that scripture is talking about. We resist the devil when he's trying to tempt us or convince us or, or can, uh, trick us into, you know, something that we know is not of God, right? But what God is saying here is that we need to, we need to, there's a, there are principles, there's a foundation, there's an equipping, there's an armor that God has given us that we have 24-7. So when the enemy comes to rob you of your peace, when the enemy comes and lies to you, when the enemy comes and he tries to, you know, bring doubt against your faith, when the enemy tries to uh, uh, convince you or, and deny you that you aren't saved, you know, those are... are um, those are opportunities for us to use these weapons of warfare and to bind the enemy from their maneuvers and their tactics, amen? Whenever the enemy is coming at you, trying to take you, take any of these things from you, we need to use these things against them and bind them in Jesus' name. That's when you go into spiritual warfare. That's where we're waging war. So when the enemy comes at us, we don't just take it. That's where we raise up a standard against it and we declare the word of God over what the God says about those situations and, and like the, the spirit of fear comes at you and tries to rob you of your peace, you say, no, God's given me boots of peace. And these boots were made to tread over serpents and scorpions and every demonic force that is coming against the call of God on my life. Come on. You know, when he says, oh, you know, God can't do that for you. No, he has given me a shield of faith and I deny that doubt in Jesus name. I bind you and I tell you to lay off my, the calling of God for my life. Amen. When the, when the devil tries to, um, tell you oh, you're not a christian you sinned all you sinned again you missed the mark again you say no by his stripes i was healed he hung on the cross for my sins i am delivered i am a child of god i have confessed and believed in my heart therefore i am saved i am my name is written in the land's book of life devil i bind you in the name of jesus come on that's that's what you do when you're alone and the enemy tries to come at you with these lies and these thoughts and tries to rob you of your day you know it's all this armor has already already been given to you once you are saved and you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior he gives you this armor and when you go to war this armor fits you this armor has been tested and like David said this armor is tested I can take this Goliath out because I know that God is is the deliverer amen and he is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that I could ask or think amen so it, said, it continues here in Ephesians, says, Pray passionately in the Spirit as you constantly intercede with every form of prayer at all times. Pray the blessings of God upon all his believers and pray also that God's revelation will be released through me every time I preach the wonderful mystery of the hope-filled gospel. So we can see that there, uh, warfare comes in in the prayer room. Warfare happens when we pray. We counterattack. We have an offense. We're not always on the defense. There's an offense that Christians have. And a lot of times we want to have this passive or uh, aggressive or we want to have this passiveness in our walk where it's like, oh yeah, the devil tried it again, you know, and Oh yeah, I'm going through it. Oh yeah, the battle. I'm battling, man. I'm I'm going through it, and it's just hard. It's hard. It's hard. If he's trying to rob you of your faith, of your salvation, of your righteousness, come on. If he's trying to rob you of your faith, then then there's a war that needs to take place, and we need to get in the spiritual realm and handle it because God's given us the authority. Amen. Um, in Matthew eighteen eighteen through 20, in the New King James Version, he said, Surely I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them, and my Father 
by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. So even if, you're, if you know that you need to get in battle and, and you know that you're, you, it's called for warfare and you need to get in the spiritual realm and handle it, but maybe you know, um, you're just learning how to pray or, or, or maybe it's just such a, it's just a, such a challenging you know, um, battle that your faith may not be um, there. You know, God meets us where we're at in our level of faith and I believe that's why he gave us this scripture. When two are gathered together in his name, he's there in the midst of them. And so call your faith friends. It's so important to have faith friends. It's important to have each other that we can call to and turn to and be like, hey man, I'm going through this battle and I know I need to wage war, but um, um, I, I need your help. I need somebody to stand in the gap with me and I need you to be in agreement with me and I want your faith to hook up with my faith so we can take this thing out and, and watch how God will show up and that demon will run and flee so fast. It's not even funny. He'll be like, oh man, she's got her gang. <laughs> she's got her faith gang and it's like two against one. Are you kidding? Um, so yeah, it's definitely important to get into prayer immediately. Don't wait. And honestly, we should always be in prayer. We should have a life given to prayer where we're so full of the Holy Spirit that we recognize things and the Holy Spirit will relieve it will will reveal it to you when you're sensitive when you're sensitive and you're willing to be obedient and to come aside he'll tap you and he'll reveal it to you to pray and you might not even know what it is that you're praying about but you could be handling battles before they even start come on you can even be handling um uh, situations and interceding for others and their battles before it even starts. You can be interceding for them and standing in the gap for them to help them through the battle and they might not even know it, but somehow they gain victory over that situation. Why? Because you were obedient and, and let the Holy Spirit use you to get into the war room and, and to, to go to war for them on their behalf. Amen. You know, the word says in James 5, 16, the Passion Translation says, Confess and acknowledge how you have offended one another and then pray for one another to be instantly healed. For tremendous power is released through the passionate, heartfelt prayer of a godly believer. So we can see here that when we get into prayer and when we're earnestly seeking the Lord and we're, we're fervently praying or passionately declaring the word of God over our lives, there's tremendous power available. The Lord is watching over his word to perform it and he's just hugging hovering over waiting the holy spirit's hovering and and waiting for you to declare the word so he can move and so when we get into the prayer room we're not powerless we're powerful come on there's the same spirit of god that's inside of us to declare over our situations and we can watch circumstances move we can watch atmospheres shift we can see the tremendous victory that belongs to us walk out in our daily lives as we submit ourselves to prayer come on you know, uh, the same power of Christ, the same power that, that raised Christ from the dead dwells inside of us. We can use that power. We have the same power inside of us. It's when we get into the prayer room and we stir up the gifts and we stir it up and we stir up our faith and we declare the word, the gospel over our lives and we, we use this armor that he's given us and we declare truth over ourselves where the enemy has, he, he has no power. He's, his, his powers have been removed and he has, his hands have been taken off of the situation and you can shift the battleground into your favor come on we want to shift the battleground into our favor we don't want them always on the offense and us on the defense we want to take offense come on we want to take ground the word says to occupy so we need to take ground and occupy the enemy would love to just you know give you this little tiny territory this little tiny space in the spirit where where that's where you are you're in this little bubble but god's saying no i've given you greater i've given you more i've given you more influence i've given you more souls i've given you more opportunity i've given you a greater platform uh the enemy wants to take it we need to stand ground and fight we need to uh you know take out those foxes that are trying to get into the vineyard come on so we need to stay full. The first Corinthians six seventeen says, but he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. So it's not just us fighting. It's Christ inside of us fighting for us. Amen. It's not our flesh, uh, taking hold of the situation. It's the spirit of God inside of us. That's declaring over our lives. That's, that's powers backing up what you're saying. Amen. You're not just thrown out into the fishes with sharks around just waiting to be devoured. No, God's equipped you. He's given you the word. He's given you his peace. He's given you his salvation. He's given you, you know, his righteousness and, and, uh, his, um, 
Oh, goodness, his word, the sword, come on. And he's given us, each of us a measure of faith. And when we have that measure of faith, we can make it grow by hearing and hearing the word. And so when a, we're devouring the word and we're meditating on the word and we're spending time in prayer, we're a force to be reckoned with. Come on, we can, we can come at the enemy and be like, I don't think so. Not today, Satan, not today, uh-uh. And don't waste time, you know, don't, don't let the enemy try to, uh, you know, sneak in with these little tiny, tiny lies. No, we cast those things down immediately. We take action immediately. You know, we don't, we have such a, a small opportunity in this life. Life is just a whisper, you know, and we don't want to take granted. We don't want to take it uh, lightly. You know, there's a, there's a calling, there's a purpose, there's a destiny for each and every one of us. And we don't want the enemy to prevent and to hinder and to, to keep from us what God has called us to and what God has for us. Amen. So we get into the war room. It's time to take it to the war room and, and get to business, get serious about it. So when we stay full, when we're um, willing and obedient to come aside and spend time in prayer, Prayer, when we're sensitive enough to recognize that this is not from God, when we're so full of the word and, and we know the armor of God that is on, that we're equipped with, we recognize the enemy and we go to the war room, we take authority, we take action. Uh, we're not passive about it. There's a two sides to every battle and the battle belongs to the Lord and we have the victory. Jesus Christ is our Victoria champion, right? So when we're staying full, it provides power and prayer. You know, Peter said that um, he prayed three times daily, and I remember when I first got saved, and I was just like, it felt like every day was battle, you know? It was like, oh my gosh, I gotta wake up today. That was a struggle, and it was like, oh man, I gotta go to work today. That was a struggle, you know? And then it was like, oh man, I gotta work with this person today, and then that was a struggle, you know? It seemed like it was so hard just to get through the day, you know? And I remember reading that, and I took it seriously, because I knew that when I got into prayer, I could feel the presence of God. And so I would I would hunger for that. I would long for that. I would be eager for that. And I would cling to it because I didn't know what else to do. You know, sometimes we get so, how do you say it? A strong in faith in our own religious duties that we forget the power of God that's available. And we rely on our own um, maneuvers, our own tactics to overcome circumstances. And God is saying, no, the battle belongs to me. Submit to me and get into prayer and take authority over those things and watch how I move. And so I remember I would go into my bedroom and I'd pray for 10 minutes and I'd be like, okay, I'm recharged. And then I'd go back to my day and then I remember going to work and it would be lunchtime and I'd be like, oh gosh. And I'd get into the bathroom and I'd pray and, and I'd be like, okay, I'm souped up. I can do this. I'm ready to go. The peace of God would come, you know, the enemy, the fear, the dread, the insecurities, the, the doubt, the, the fear of God, the fear would just leave, you know, and I would, I would feel peace. I would feel the grace of God upon my life to be able to continue to, to be able to press forward into what I had to do that day. I remember going home and, and I was just so exhausted and I didn't feel like cooking dinner. I didn't feel like doing chores. I just didn't feel like doing any of that. So I would get into the spirit. I would get home. I'd go to my room and I'd pray for another 15 minutes and I get all souped up and I feel the power of God. I feel strength rise up but the joy of the Lord would be my strength and it would bubble up and I would go out there and I would do my dinner and my dinner would come out awesome because it was anointed, right? <laughs> I'm just saying like these are opportunities where we need to stay full of the Holy Ghost, man, because you don't know what kind of opportunities are available to you that day that where we can uh, rise up and become victorious champions, right? So I just hope that stirs you. I hope that, you know, reminds us that we are equipped. God has given us his armor. He's given us um, the tools that are necessary. He's given us the authority over every demonic force that's against us and our calling in our lives. And it's, it's not something that we just expect or assume to happen on its own. It's a position that we need to take. It's a place that we need to um, fill and we need to act. We need to speak. We need to take authority over these things and not just allow them to come in and just have a field day in our lives. Amen. God's paid too high of a price to see us suffer. He's paid too high of a price to see us get lazy and passive. He's paid too high of a price for us to be too scared to, to do what he's already called us to do, what he's already equipped us to do. You know, the devil's a liar. He Fear is a liar. God is love. He is full of love. And where there is love, there is absence of fear. And God didn't give us a spirit of fear, but of love, 
power and a sound mind, right? That's all. That's what we stand in. That's where that peace, standing in peace comes into play because we know who our God is and we know what he's capable of doing. And like, to, and like David did with Goliath, a righteous indignation will rise up and all of a sudden you have something to say. Come on. And when you say it, the, God, the power of God will back you up every time. Amen. And you'll watch how these things will just fly off you, how these things will run away from you. And, and when you wake up in the morning, the devil runs scared because because he knows that you're not something to mess with. Come on. <laughs> you're anointed. Come on. God's given you authority. Amen. To tread over serpents and scorpions and every power and principality of darkness. Amen. So if you're here tonight and you say, I have gone through war and I'm going through battles and I just, I, I want Jesus to be my Lord and Savior and to be a uh, the power inside me to give me that victory and, and the authority to overcome these things in my life. And, and you want Jesus to be your Lord and Savior. God's been asking me to start uh, adding this, the salvation prayer, um, the prayer of salvation at the end of my videos. Um, so I'm going to read this little paragraph here. Um, and then it's going to be a little slow because I want you to be able to repeat after me. Um, but if, if you're hungry for truth, if you're hungry to see victory in your life and, and it's time for a change and you're fed up with the way life has gone, gone and the way the enemy has just robbed you of God's best for your life, uh, then repeat these words after me and, and we'll, we'll be in agreement with you and uh, we'll just get to see how Jesus just transforms your life. He did it for me. He did it for countless others that I know and I just know that he can do it for you and he is just itching to know you. He's itching to be a part of your life. He can't wait to introduce himself to you and to show you all that he's capable of doing for you and through you and in you. Amen. So Heavenly Father, I, I'm going to read this. And so if you guys just want to repeat after me, Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. Your word says, him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. So I know you won't cast me out, but you will take me in, and I thank you for it. You said in your word, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I believe in my heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe Jesus died for my sins and was raised from the dead so I can be in right standing with God. I am calling upon his name, the name of Jesus. So I know, Father, that you save me now. Your word says, with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. I do believe with my heart, and I confess Jesus now is my Lord. Therefore, I am saved. Thank you, Father. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That means that you are saved and heaven is rejoicing. Angels are singing hallelujahs and praise ye the Lord's. And they're jumping and, and shouting and praising God because now you are written in the Lamb's book of life. And so now God is equipping you with his armor. And you've gotten the helmet of salvation. Come on. You've got the breastplate of righteousness. Come on. Get yourself a Bible and you'll have the spirit, the sword of the spirit. Amen. And Jesus is now in your heart. So you've got the, the feet of peace because he gave you his peace, not the peace of this world, but his peace. Amen. Peace that surpasses all understanding. Peace that stands garrison upon our hearts and our minds. Amen. And so he's also given you faith. You've got faith now. So it's time to exercise that faith and, and let that faith be a shield against the lies of the enemy and see how he just moves in your life and and you're going to grow and you're going to be a giant slayer. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, thank you so much, y'all, for joining me on A Dose of Devotion. It's been a pleasure. It's been an honor and it's been a blessing. 
I am so look forward to next week. I know God's got something better and something good. And uh, so praise the Lord. All right, y'all. Share with a friend. Tag a friend. Let, if, you, if you feel like they could really be blessed by this and benefit from, from it, we're all learning. We're all growing. So God bless you all. Have a good night. Bye. Mwah. <laughs>